Hey everybody, welcome to uh, Stone Faced Reactions. I'm Griffin and this is Theta and we're here to react to Death Battle. And today we got a fun one. It's going to be Red versus Blue from the series uh what was that series called for called? I can't remember Theta. What was it? Ruby. Ruby, yes, ah uh, yes, the one everyone remembers. No, uh, from Red versus Blue, of course. A uh, long time running machinima uh, based on Halo. Uh it's been going around since, what, 2008? Before even that? Sometime just after uh, Halo Combat Advance was released, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that was ages ago. I was pretty sure I was still in high school at the time. I'm pretty sure so. I was working at Target at the time. But I definitely remember, like, uh, watching the series with, like, a friend and just, like, binging, like, eight seasons, like, in a week. That was a fun time. And then never again... <laughs> I don't know, I think I've binged it all twice. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Up to a certain point. I have no real knowledge of where they're at currently, but I am probably around the same time frame as you are. Which is probably at the end of the Leonard Church timeline, I want to say. Mm -hmm. I think where he's in Carolina, and if not, spoilers. I remember them being on a frozen planet and hopping between portals. That was a gimmick for a season, I think. I don't think that was <clears throat> on the frozen planet. But then again, they teleport between worlds quite a lot during the series. Yeah. So. I mean, like as a framing device for like an entire season where they're just lost or something. I thought that was during when they were crashed on one planet, but it wasn't a frozen planet. And then they make a portal somewhere? It has been a while. I did binge it twice, but there's a lot to binge and I can't, I don't remember. Yeah, so all my knowledge is old, but I mean, like, the premise of what we know, I think, is probably the same. Everyone is uh, goofy to some degree, incompetent, and to some degree also strangely competent. Uh, and together they fight crime. Uh, I believe you have the blue team, and I have the red team. Right. Because you lost last <clears throat> time, I got to pick first. I knew who's going to win, with a 99% certainty. 99.99% repeating. Of course. Uh, uh, so, I guess uh, you want to say anything about your blue team? Alright, let's see. We have Leonard Church, uh, who is, in fact, an AI uh, made by Project Freelancer. I think he was the original one who gets split off, uh, used by his memory of loss, I want to say, because he's... Sorry, trying to remember this off the top of my head. He is the AI version of the creator of the system, and he keeps getting experiencing the loss of his wife, which is how they make all the other bits of AI. And I think by the end of the series, he's merged back in with all of them, so he's like the combined church again. Uh, leader of the team. Then he have his also fake girlfriend Tex, who's on the team mercenary so i mean if it wasn't for i did i did watch the preview fight thing where uh, same here yeah where it shows who's on which team because i wasn't certain before if tex was going to be on anyone's team and she's the complete badass i mean apparently she has the built-in flaw of needing to fail but doesn't mean she loses every fight that she's in she's like the number one freelancer it's it's thanos basically ah yeah i guess technically uh you have shield of the tank or, I don't know, I in the preview it's Shield of the Tank, but she gets uploaded into a dropship in, like, middle of the, the show. So, she should be Shield of the dropship, in which case she just falls on people because that's what she does. <laughs> uh, we have Caboose the Team Killer, so I don't know where that's going to come into play. I can only assume he's going to kill a team member, maybe Church, and have him turn into a ghost and <laughs> inhabit somebody's suit because he can do that. Uh, who am I missing? Ah, oh, God, I can't remember Sniper Guy. You know, give me the sniper. What are they saying? <laughs> but he's the ladies' man. Or he thinks he is. He really wants the Warthog because he can pick up chicks because he can't pick up chicks in a tank. God, I can't remember his name all of a sudden. And I suddenly I can't remember... I'm, I'm starting to remember characters that they didn't bring up in the videos, like what's his name's uh, sister who joins the other team. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that happens like in a later season and she just knows Spanish and everyone's like surprised. <laughs> right, yeah, and she comes back uh, when they go back to the other canyon. I think that was Griffin's sister? Sounds right. Maybe, I don't know. 
kill me for my uh, lack of red versus blue lore. Oh, God, am I forgetting anybody? Uh, Caboose, Church, Sheila, <clears throat> Tex, Guy, whose name I can't remember, but I've li- literally listed all of his traits. Mm-hmm. God, I want to say that's. I want to say that's it. But yeah, no, blue team are the main characters of red versus blue. They are the ones that get shit done, and they lean on red sometimes when they need to. But literally, red team has never cost one casualty in blue team. Blue team is the only team with any kills to their name, and they're all team kills, which means they're good Wasn't at killing a... the team. Oh, right, I guess that's how he died, then. Yeah, that's why Caboose is the team-killing ass tard, or whatever the hell they call him. The mm-hmm. Fuck tard. But, um, yeah. Yeah, no red me- team member has ever killed a blue team member. That is just fact. Yeah. I mean, that's basically the whole premise. Like I said, everyone is somewhat incompetent. Uh, oh, in fact, team... in fact, Blue Team killed their own commander, if you remember, by giving him something he was allergic to. That's two kills to Blue Team. On nice. Blue Team. We got a track record of killing everyone that is possibly their ally. This is good. Good start. <laughs> Alright, so good you choice. you name everybody in Red Team and tell us what they're about. Uh, let's see. I think I could probably name four. Uh, we got Sarge, who's the leader, who actually occasionally is militarily competent, but also completely up his own ass. Uh, we got, uh, Griffin, who's a perpetual loser, because of course I am. Um, <clears throat> uh, who probably is the most, like, uh, even... The most even personality out of everyone. Like, he seems the least crazy. Is his name Griffin? I know it's Griff. It might just be Griff. Yes. Is his full name Griffin? <laughs> Are you just projecting? Maybe. Maybe I'm just projecting. Are you projecting Maybe on the laziest member of the show ever? It would be a very Griffin move to be lazy and do nothing. <laughs> hey, there we go. Now we have a personality trait. Uh, there's uh, Lopez, the Spanish-speaking robot, who apparently just keeps blowing up and they can't fix him. Uh, but he also has a track record of just, like, surviving on his own pretty well, so that seems pretty competent. I mean, except for that whole period of time where he's just ahead. Mm-hmm. Also, did the, hey. also, didn't also did Sheila and Lopez have a thing for a while? I think so. So, uh, we're definitely not gonna see that in the fight. <laughs> well, I mean, not, uh, we're not gonna see them fight each other in the fight. Um... And then there's Donut, the craziest one, who's not all there, I think. Is he crazy? I think he is. Is he like... the one who gets the AI in his suit? And it goes, you know, he has the normal talk and then the <laughs> evil voice. Yeah, I think he has like a berserker mode in him. I can't remember. I can never remember which one that was in season one that had that. So that is four people, and that's what I can remember. And they have a Puma. So you said Sarge, you said Griff, you said Lopez, Donut. and Donut. Lopez. What about the, the technical guy? The nerd of the group. Ah, ah my brain. You don't it's remember the like... one that Sarge is the kick? He's the kiss-ass to Sarge, always talking about killing Griff. I'm fairly certain that character exists, but I just don't remember their name. <laughs> You remember he's a cyborg? He can the change Errol clothes Frank. really quick? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's the one I think... Uh, is that Gus, his voice actor? I, was, I thought you were going to say his name is Gus, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure there's no Gus on this show. <laughs> yeah, the, the voice actor is Gus, I'm pretty sure, if I'm remembering the voices right. I have no idea what you're mentioning. Gus Fring from Breaking Bad? He's... No, uh... The people at Rooster Teeth, one of them is called Gus. Okay. And I've listened to enough of them just like randomly doing bullshit podcasts that like I remember the voice at least a little bit. See, I, I didn't think that's his character. I didn't watch a lot of Achievement Hunter or those other shows. I did the. I, I, did I watched watch the. I made it shorts. <laughs> yeah, see, I watched uh, a bunch of their um, their heist videos and then mostly Fun House, which means I don't get to see a lot of the people that do the um, Machinima stuff. Yeah, but I got I got enough of Gross in my brain as like the grumpy one, so uh I'm pretty sure that's his voice. Uh don't remember the character's name though. <laughs> Not offhand. Because it's been a while. Yeah. Uh either way, uh for Red Team, I'm feeling like they have the most ability to come together as perfectly average. Yeah, I can I can really see that based on how the Sarge wants to kill Griff and the other guy wants to help see Griff die to get on Sarge's good side. 
but they haven't actually done it. And if Blue Team's the only one that has killed their own team. And if Donut is the guy who has the split personality do the AI thing in his head, then he's also going to be anti his own team as well. So. Let's see how it plays out then. All I'm right. ready to watch a viewer. Edison versus Tesla. Tesla. Oh, versus like Pepsi. Dennis or something. Goo Goo versus Superman. Few rivalries have lasted nearly two decades or spawned epic battles like our second favorite web series, Red versus Blue. With the Red Team, even though most of them don't actually wear red. And the Blue Team, their perpetual ocean-colored rivals. For this battle, we'll be bringing these they two groups back to Carolina where it all before, didn't started. They? To find out what would have happened if they had so. stopped dicking around Tex and won. actually just fought for real. On just to note, we will be locking so, any artificial intelligence being, uh, characters within their Halo primary series, body, Super since Soldiers they're generally invincible pretty unless good they stumble in into an EMP. You mean an M? What? Well, I mean, they're all freelancers. Is an an mm -hmm. and it's the only actual freelancer being represented here is Tex, who, who beat Carolina. A death battle. Right, so highly competent, basically. Hey. Well, I just mean better than all the red team. You ever wonder why we're here? Not long from now in a galaxy, theoretically exactly where we are, humanity goes to war with an alien covenant. So the United Nations Space Command came up with a ton of plans to win, and one of those was called Project Freelancer. Essentially an experiment using AI to create invincible super soldiers. In order to fabricate scenarios to train these highly advanced warriors, Well yeah, this is all from the best, one of the, well, one of the better seasons. Approach. Dumping Where you got to see the backstory of Carolina and Tex and all that. Telling them they're at war with each other. Enter the red team. Dick Simmons, Dexter Griff, Simmons, Franklin that's what you forgot. Lopez the Heavy, and their leader, Super Colonel Sarge. Yes, that is his full name and rank. You know how they say prejudice is taught, not born? Dexter well, Griff. He's not Griffin. Super He's just Griff. Ah, dang it. How no. much he hates blue, Don't get to see yourself killed in animation. Attention, blue team. This is the red team. We are here to destroy you! Your long reign of being the shittiest team around is about to come to a sudden and cataclysmic end! Once an orbital drop shot trooper, Sarge was unfortunately discharged after developing a fear of heights, only to be picked up by Project Freelancer to achieve his dream. Lead the glorious Reds against the dirty Took out one of the stars, I forget what that's about. Uh, man, he's great. He seems like the kind of guy you could just... Forgot what state he was against. With. Uh, ah. sure. Sarge may be an unorthodox Dang, leader, God, I but he knows his now. men very well. I, I do like that, the pop-up one where he's actually the pop-up anyway. For oh, yeah. Seasons, and those two spend a lot of time together. It's a complicated relationship, though you may be surprised at their capabilities. Simmons may be a brilliant geek, like myself, but he proves stereotypes wrong by changing his armored suit in just four seconds. Well, how about this? How did you change so fast? I've always been a fast changer. Mjolnir armor is designed to be applied by Spartans within a considerable. I mean, conceivably, he could have just, you know, would imply changed the color on the outside. Times faster than the average super uh, soldier. He, he could have like He's slipped in and out the neck. Cyborg, you know, he like, but everyone wiggle. forgets that these days. You know? Meanwhile, Griff is the laziest member of the. I mean, there's the other one that's always changes their color because they don't like fuchsia or pink. He's also been hit in the nuts more times than I can count, and he's still standing today. That's some balls of steel right there. Then there's Donut, easily duped but always a Yeah, it said he's all the experience they got throughout the entire series. Sheila becomes a dropship. Magenta. Ooh, okay. Donut has shown incredible you remember that? tenacity. Dropship crashes. I, I, the chest, I think I didn't get that far. The trap drift she crashes and they can't take Sheila with them. They upload year. Sheila into the dropship. And he's got the best throwing arm around. He threw a grenade halfway across the canyon. Which is over 1,500 feet long. And last of all is the team robot who hates everyone, Lopez. Hola. Lopez G! That robot looks like Lopez. Hey, regresado. Uh, no matter how many times they rebuild him, they can never figure out how to fix that language setting. Oh, well. The Reds carry a standard Spartan assortment of Magnums, battle rifles, and SMGs. But if I had to pick one weapon of the bunch, I'd have to go with Sarge's trusty shotgun. Seriously? The weapon with the shortest range? Whiz! How long have we known each other? Have you never looked at my leg before? <laughs> Besides, an effective range of 45 meters is almost the length of an Olympic swimming pool. Watch your back, Michael Phelps. I know how to beat you now. Of course, we can't forget their hallmark vehicle, the Warthog. You mean the Puma? Like a Puma to me. Hey, hey, Chupa thingy. 
This three ton super oh, car tops that looks more like a puma to me. Per hour. Oh, yeah, it's heavily armored. Well, the new it's actually supposed happen. to be somehow the Reds always find new ways to break. Yeah, but it's also just that a bad weapon. <laughs> And you know what they I don't think anyone's ever been shit. I don't think anyone's ever been hit by the chain gun. But what I find most baffling is that for some reason these low-life dimwits have been given the most state-of-the-art space marine armor in the galaxy. Oh yeah, the Mark VI Majolner suit. Mjolnir. Gesundheit. Titanium plating. Energy shields. Hydrostatic gel. Liquid metal crystal. These babies can take one hell of a beating. Apparently strong enough to withstand the blast of a 50 megaton bomb. Burn down a water. Gotta love it when yeah, a bomb goes up. It's so big. Sort of one blood gulch by technicality. Good times. But when push came to I mean, shove, sure, blue team left first, so yeah. The deadliest warriors in the galaxy, the meta. Despite all logic to be fair, the reason, reason, both teams the fought the meta. Dear, mm -hmm. I am forced to admit, these morons have proven to be a I mean, double technicality. Church is also part of the meta. I'm not ordering you to go. I ain't even asking. Yeah, then I guess they beat what Blue do, Ah, one win under the belt. I win. Uh, well, need to watch sure, but I mean, they also got their ass kicked by the meta before as well, so the meta beat them multiple times. Dang, back to a draw. The Blues. They're not just a great way to sing out all those complicated, messed up feelings you keep down about being fatherless. They're the second half of this epic. But, you know, singing Blues would be perfect for this team. They've been through a lot. Maybe true. Unlike the Reds, they've suffered numerous casualties and are constantly plagued by Project Freelancer's experiments. You know how they were experimenting with AI? They could only get one, an alpha based on the project's director. Shit went down and they had to hide the alpha where nobody would ever find it. Apparently, this box canyon in the middle of nowhere seemed the perfect fit. This is Blue Team. Leonard Church, Lavernius Tucker, Agent Texas, Sheila, who is a living tank, and Caboose. After Tucker was a guy's name I couldn't remember. Captain to a, there you uh, go. Deadly allergy incident. Church reluctantly stepped up to be the blue team's unofficial leader. Spoiler alert, he's the secret alpha AI. I don't know what makes him so special, though. He's a cranky asshole who's go, terrible Agent at Texas. literally everything he does. He doesn't even know he's an AI. He thinks he's a ghost. But remember that 50 megaton bomb? He didn't think he's a ghost past first season. Second too, season. Including himself, while it was inside his own body. What the hell? Tucker wants you man, to think marathon. he's a ladies' man. However, after careful, painstaking analysis, well, I mean, we have determined that he has the very past little and the future. Gain, then. Being that his most frequent hookup is a rock. He's kind of a badass, though. He's stabbed the meta. Sure, you can do Cyclops in the balls. See, I don't have anything context-wise with Cyclops himself. stuff. I've he yeah, that's a kick-ass so way it only way later. Works for him. <laughs> but for the biggest badass of the bunch, look no further than Agent Texas. Yeah, Tex Blue Team actually has anomaly. badasses. She's not really a Blue. Well, I mean, Tex could take out both to teams circumstance. together. Yeah, so she's I also don't. Not yeah. really a freelancer, but a robot duplicate hosting an artificial intelligence fragment split from the Alpha as a Clone of the director's late wife, Allison. Yeah, duh, Simple. guys. How did you so not clear. see that coming from the show? I mean, it kind of is if you watch the full season. The text fragment show. Yeah. Specifically based on the but they gotta condense of Allison's it all down to like 15 and the seconds there. The concept of failure. This means that Tex is literally programmed to fail. Now, this doesn't mean she can't win fights or that her team can't succeed on missions. It's more of a personal defect. It sure hasn't stopped I her mean, from kicking some serious ass. Typically means she was fails in the long haul. I mean, individually, she never really fails. And could even flip over Sheila. You know, the 66-ton tank with yeah, a mind again, of its own? The perfect syndrome. companion for Caboose's yeah, To be fair, anyone can flip over screen. Sheila. You all know Caboose. It's the mechanics of Halo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> everything he says. And he's really... Really, I mean, I guess really, they're all wearing really, the real near really armor, dumb. which gives them massive hey, amounts of strength. Of the so dummy. they're all capable of it. Man. They're all just perfect timing. Idiots. As this battle will be in Blood Gulch, the usual teleportation units will be in place. The Blues have used these teleporters frequently with varying results. In you go. Certainly. Yeah, he's gonna come out coated what with a black wrong. shit on him. Is instantaneous, as you can see. You totally killed him, didn't you? Probably. Well, aside well, no, that's what happens in the first leader, season, is they the come up and code with some black shit. Weapons. I mean, they don't really need much when they have a robot ninja on their side. Church does have a cool sniper rifle, but he really sucks with it. Which sort of makes sense. Unlike everyone else, Church never experienced any training or combat before Blood Gulch. You know, that explains a lot. Even without specialized weapons, Blue Team has a few aces up their sleeves. 
Agent Tex carries an additional AI fragment, Omega. I prefer O'Malley. The fragment of the Alpha's rage. With it, she can use extra enhancement gear, such as a cloaking device. It also affects her personality, quite literally transforming her into a vicious killing machine. Yeah, so I guess one of the red team ain't gonna get O'Malley like they did before. It can also pop out of her head and yeah, possess other people like a ghost. Fair but with the remember, we're locking AIs to their I mean, bodies because that is super overpowered. <laughs> even though Tex has shown incredible well, no, because he comes back later with like rocket launchers and whatnot. Even Be good for your team. In a robot body identical to the one she used to flip Sheila, Tex was unable to lift Andy the bomb, while Caboose could do so for extended periods of time. And after entering an alien temple, Santa, don't question it, increased gravity by tenfold. And I mean, that's the storyline where uh, O'Malley comes back. Struggling to do rocket launchers. Like that. I mean, I guess this means Caboose is better Rocket than Goku. Stop Santa, it. Don't you dare open those floodgates. I'm kidding, you idiot. Still, Caboose was strong enough to defeat a bunch of Tex clones all at once. It's like they say, it's God's way of compensating. Unfortunately, the blue team has a tendency to get in way over their heads, often losing team members in the process. But somehow, some way, they always come back together. They're a good team in a weird, stupid way. Sheila, shut them up. Son of a bitch! All right, the combatants are set. We've run the data through all possibilities. It's time for a death battle! Now, I mean, in my ideal scenario, Church wouldn't be there. I mean, I don't know how to say this. <laughs> church wouldn't be there because he'd be an AI in, uh, mm -hmm. in uh, Carolina. I, did you get that far? I really don't know anymore, unfortunately. The one of the, like the final act of church, um I mean, I don't know. I think it's during that season where they go to the alien planet to uh overthrow mm -hmm. the freelancer or the two guys and their mercenary whatever is happening there. Uh, you know, it does the uh the freezing scene on the red team and the blue team all in one room together as they're about to be overwhelmed by a force that's coming down through the ship that they're on, and Church freezes time in his super uh, uh, computation, computational way, and like says goodbye to everybody because the only way to he can figure out and like a whole Doctor Strange before Doctor Strange was did it in the movie was to like sacrifice himself to get himself back up to full power or whatever, but forget everything before C three PO did it. <laughs> Uh, One last look at my friends. Yeah. Basically, yeah, basically is what he says too, in a weird sort of red versus blue way. Confirmed, is Star Wars just took all of its ideas from red versus blue. I, mean, I guess so, but I mean, at that time, I think he's riding around in either Carolina's armor or um, Tucker's, because Tucker also wears the Meta's armor, uses the Meta's weapon. At the same time, like it would be wrong to like exclude him. He's he's the main character. He's part of the core group, and that's needed for the team. So right, but I'm saying to him. include him. I in my in my ideal scenario, he would be Carolina would be there, and he would be the AI in Carolina's armor. Mm. So that way we get Tex and Carolina in there. Carolina, by the way, wears blue armor. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I guess not enough a part of the main team, or not introduced early enough that didn't matter. Uh, what's my best thing? Um, well, I mean, I did confirm that, uh, yeah, it's Gus's voice in Simmons. And, hey, I learned what Simmons' name was. Uh, as for how they're going to do, uh, Blue Team is stacked with all the cool, weird stuff. Main characters. Uh, and honestly, this is, um, this is our kind of dichotomy here. You have Team Random. You have Team, they could do 0 to 100, or negative 100 to 100. I got team average. They might do anywhere from 0 to 25. They're not team average. <laughs> they suck. <laughs> okay, but their lower limit is still 0. Two of them wants to kill the third one. A fourth that one hates... They're good at it. <laughs> a fourth one hates the rest of them. The worst they can do is nothing. <laughs> Which is typically what they do do. Right, which is better than... <laughs> shooting themselves in the foot, killing their own teammates, and everyone exploding and turning into AI. Only one of them has killed the other ones, if you don't count the former leader who got an allergy. 
In which oh, case, I mean, two, two of them... an infinite number uh, less than one, so, you know. If two of them kill the other two, and then turn around and kill the red team, who do nothing according to you, then we still win. We'll just have to see how it pans out, I suppose. Right. Will Will blue team have their badasses come out in force? Will the puma be used? Let's find out. <laughs> Again, Tex alone can take out all all teams. Mm -hmm. Okay, why did we bring the flag out here? Because it's supposed to rain today. You have to remember to take your flag outside when it rains. None of that is right. What's a flag got to do with rain? Wait, do you think the flag is an umbrella? Caboose, have you ever seen an umbrella before? Hey, yoink. <laughs> that, blue. Yeah, suck it, blue. Man, I should have just walked over and asked for it. This that worked before. <laughs> hey, dumbass! The teleporter never worked! Now come on, let's... Wait, where's Caboose? Great work for that fake weather report, boys! That's the kind of fake news I like! What fake weather report? Oh, that's all the time. Oh. I don't know what about. Let's go, Oshila! The only good red is a red in bed! Griff, quit your staring and get to stepping! On the gas, Ponto! Uh, yeah, I know! And the entire team blows up at once. Sheila, look out for that rock! Oh no, there's another one! I mean, all of these rocks out here. At some point. Watch out! In this game, man! Keep your hand and hit him from behind! Just like John Wayne would have done! Oh, they didn't no, even wait, mention uh, Griff's kid. Move over, I just thought about that. Hey, don't leave me out here. You know, the alien child. Just last second team member. Oh, yeah, I mean, he has the uh, the alien flying thing. Which will rupture and cause the tank to self-destruct in a glorious explosion! Excellent plan, sir. Except for, well, all of it. You know, maybe... Oh, that's a bigger clip than I thought! Oh! That's a bigger clip than I thought. <laughs> and they're all dead. What yeah, was that? Well, that was a good death battle. Where's... Simmons? Simmons! Uh, here, blah! No! Wait. Why does Griff have the Bendis gun? Uh, because he wants oh, to. No, Maybe I've forgotten who has the weapon. Yeah! I'm pretty Who sure. No judging. End of the line, Reds. Dirty Blue! The first time in history, you're exactly right. Today is a good day to die. George! Everyone misses everything. I mean, Sarge has no chance in hell against Tex. Tex literally beat up all of Red Team once. Together. Profit for doing it. Well, I mean, literally, she did up them all on at once when they had portals. But they couldn't figure out how to take her out. Yeah, uh, yeah. Nutshot. Uh, Yelp. Not today, Roboto! <laughs> See, Lopez was about to shoot Sarge. It's like I Yelp. said, hates them all. Swish! Idiota! Let me read for Blue if they weren't all terrible. Tucker's actually not any good with that blade, so... Not unexpected. Mierda. I've never hit a lady! Good thing you're no lady! Again, Tex has taken out the entire red team before. Snap neck. It's everything to group. Charge! How do I help? Just stay there, Caboose! Oh, right. I forgot Caboose is gonna take a team out somehow. I want to help! Help by not helping! God damn it! This rifle is busted! Help has arrived! Caboose! No! Yep. Yep. <laughs> Tucker did it. You son of a bitch. This is it. This is what it's all about. I see the announcer coming on. Quadra. Blood. 
versus Star water. Versus which boots. is really just lifeless, tasteless, waste of space blood. Destiny awaits. I'm still thinking Today, Caboose comes out. He can't take out dies. Caboose. He's got his own single special. Well, should've seen that coming. Blup. Blup. Good I said, I'm out. dead. Called it. Literally called it as it was happening. I think Caboose still wins. You can't kill Caboose. Okay, so the Reds had plenty going for them. They had brains and speed on their side with Simmons, and they had some epic firepower. But the blue team had the grit to overpower them. Caboose is the only one of them beyond church who had his own single special. Caboose's guide to stuff. Flipping Sheila and lifting Andy made that pretty clear. Hell, Sarge even tried to lift Andy once and he couldn't do it. Poor guy. Even with such charisma, leadership qualities, and big dead energy, you can't win them all. Speaking of which, it could be argued Sarge has more extensive military experience than anyone else. However, Texas freelancer training was far more intensive than standard military issue. Just look at what she did to the Reds before. She's yeah, a monster. Special ops Not training to mention, she in technically a small scale engagement of training. Range. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's I'm sure yeah that's her lame awesome. programming meant she couldn't win the fight by herself, but her blue teammates picked up the slack. Tucker even got some freelancer training in too, thanks to Agent Washington, and could hold off a platoon of mercs all by himself. No one ever said he wasn't good at solo activities. Oh, and in the fight between tanks versus cars, tanks generally win. I mean, that one's pretty obvious. In general. The red team may yep. have been extremely resilient, mostly thanks to aggravating stubbornness, but it wasn't enough to survive the stellar skill and the brute force of blue team. Uh, if only they could have read that they'd end up with a case of the blues. And that's even without releasing the obviously superior power of artificial intelligence units. You know, dummy, you ever wonder oh, why you're here? Black shit, like oh, said. The oh, there it is. The winner is the blue team. Thanks for checking out I've that episode kind of been battle. spoiled on like what the next fight, fight is, sure but since you lost, RBD you get to that pick I first. On so, yep. the first episode I gotta say at least, right now not entirely unexpected what happened. Check the link in the description. Oh, yeah, there, no, there. I, I just more confidence on blue. I called it. Get go. Batgirl, alright. Pretty good start. And, ah, oh, spider Gwen. Ah, oh, dang, this is actually... Could be a tough one. I'm gonna have to give it to spider Gwen for actual superpowers. Uh, Which, you, I mean... <laughs> you and the guy that I talked to at work who told me what the next battle was gonna be. I even told him just this just today. I told him, "Oh man, you've ruined it for me." But since I'm 99.9% .9 sure I'm gonna win this fight, it's not on me to decide. So, <laughs> yep, yeah, it's all me. So, uh, I'm saying Spider Gwen. Yeah. Uh, even though I think the Spider family doesn't have a good track record against the Bat family at death battle, if I'm uh, right. according to him. And he brought this up to me before. That mm -hmm. uh, Batman fought Spider-Man in Death Battle before. Yes. I want to say way back when. And Spider-Man won. Oh, okay. So then I'm just remembering it wrong. So yeah, uh, I'll, I'm going to pitch in for the Spider-Family. And of course I've got to go with Batgirl, who I brought up to this point to him before, and I'll point it to you now. Do it. Don't, uh, don't put out Barbara Gordon. The girl who got shot through the spine started a superhero career as Oracle, a wheelchair-ridden uh, character, that then comes back as Batgirl. She fought her way back from spinal injury to become a kick-ass superhero. Not the first Batman to do that, but yeah, Batman are tough. Well, she, for one thing, she's not a Batman, she's a Batgirl. It, it's it's Bat... Uh... Bat family. Bat also, family. I want to say that she is the first because I don't think Bane brought Batman's back uh, before she gets shot through the spine by Joker. And um, was it one bad day? No, no that's that's a different line. It, the killing joke. Down, at least. The killing joke is what he does it in. Yeah. Well, still, uh, I'm excited to see how that fight goes because that should be interesting. It Harvard should Gordon be. Is still, um. Is still a bat. Is still a bat character. Yeah, because she's got the background of Commissioner Gordon as her father, plus the training of Batman. <laughs> How much I, training does Batman really give anyone around? I him? don't remember if he trained her or not, or if she just shows up and is like, stop copying I, me. I think in the animated series, she just shows up. Well, I'm not gonna trust the anim. Oh god, we gotta go with the animated series, don't we? 
No, no, because they do comics too. My problem is in the animated series, there's a whole weird sexual thing going on that nobody liked. Yeah, you know, let's just let's just put that you know in the ground, bury it. Let's not talk about it. Barbara Gordon, everybody. Yeah, no, because I mean that's how they kind of ruined the other half of the killing joke that they animated with that weird Batgirl mm-hmm. seducing Batman on the roof scene that nobody wanted or asked for or thought about. Yeah. And I won't think about it ever since. All right. Well, I guess that's been Death Battle. Uh, I lost, and we'll catch you next time for Batgirl vs. Spider-Gwen. I've been Griffin, and this has been Theta, and this has been Stoneface Reactions. Catch you all next time.